Thanks for having me. My name is uh, Eric Small. I'm the territory manager for GAF. So um, I'm the sales rep. I work with contractors all over the state of Maryland. Uh, make sure that you guys are happy with the product, happy with the programs, help you guys grow your business to be as successful as we can. I work with property managers and HOAs and COAs uh, to help them navigate these larger projects, architects, engineers, distribution points to make sure that they get material when they order it, when they need it to, to service you uh, on your projects. Excellent. And you are probably the best rep that we've ever had, Eric. Thank you. So even though your last name is small, you help us in a big way. So. I appreciate it. Don't tell my predecessor. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were all fine too. So what's in store for us in 2024 with GAF? 2024 is going to be a, a interesting year. We're, we're rolling into a, a busier winter than, than it typically is. Winter is usually a time where, you know, the business slows down. We got some colder weather. Um, a lot of roofing contractors tend to regroup and, and prepare for the year. But we've had significant weather events from Thanksgiving of 2023 through now. So, um you know, we've been producing and shipping a lot of material. A lot of uh, contractors have been installing material, and it's been a busy winter, which is good. Um, hmm. We're coming off of some some interesting su supply chain issues that that have been lingering since COVID. Um, but as far as GIF is concerned, you know, we are not having production issues in terms of you know not being able to service the orders that are in the queue that we need to fill. And when did you come on board to GIF? I've been with GIF for just over two years now. Okay. Yep. So two years or so you came in after COVID. Right, right after COVID. Yeah. And were there supply chain issues right after COVID? Yeah. Yeah. So strategically we, um, GAF, we made our three core colors during COVID to make sure that we could supply the business. Right. And the reason we did that, the philosophy behind it was we wanted that material on the ground at all times. So, um, the good news now is if you need a, if you have a customer who's on the water and they want a Biscayne blue, roof to complement where they are on the water. We got Biscayne Blue now. But in order to keep up with the demand that skyrocketed with everyone being home and, and people having stimulus money, you know, the only way that we could keep up with that was making the products that, that, that we sell the most. And what are those three colors? Charcoal, Weatherwood, and Pewter Gray. And what product line? Timberline HDZ, the number one selling shingle in the country. All right, cool. Yeah. And how many color palettes are there right now? 16 total? Yeah, 16 total, including the four Harvest Blend colors. So you got the shingle products, you got the accessories. What's exciting about this year's lineup with accessories? I know there's a new pipe boot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have the new Pivot Pipe Collar. It's, um, you know, when I when I talk to homeowners who call me and they're looking for, you know, advice on on their roofing project, pipes are one of the most vulnerable parts of, of the roof. It's a penetration going through your roof. It's prone to leak. And what a lot of contractors will do is they'll come in and give you a cheap pipe collar It'll fail in three to five years and you got to fix it constantly and, and, and it's really prone to let water in. So uh, with this new pivot, it's a, it's a three-piece galvanized steel system. It's totally going to cover the pipe. And the, the benefit to it is if you're working with a master elite contractor, it's included in the system warranty. So should there be an issue with that penetration, it falls under the GIF warranty, we'll take care of it. Unlike if you pick a, you know, a hodgepodge roofing system of different components because you're trying to be cheap. You know, there's no finger pointing if it's all under one umbrella, one warranty, one system. Okay, let's talk about warranties. So what's the different levels of warranties and who can provide these warranties? Yeah, so uh, we have a, a couple of different levels of warranty, right? It comes, every shingle comes with a limited lifetime warranty. And lifetime pretty much means that there's always value associated with the roof of some capacity, but the real coverage comes from enhanced warranties that you get when you're working with a certified or a master league contractor. So that lifetime warranty only covers material defect and it prorates over a certain amount of time, just like if you're putting more miles on your car. Um, What's that proration period? It's going to prorate after 10 years down through 50 years total from the initial install. And then after 50 years, it'll be at a small percentage indefinitely, right? Okay. So, so theoretically, there's always uh, coverage on your roof, but it's going to be you know, not what you, not 100% of the value the whole time. The way that I, I describe it is that there's always value associated to it, but it's going to prorate indefinitely. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, it's confusing because yeah. limited lifetime, who's lifetime? What does that mean? Exactly. So our team kind of struggles with that as well. Mm -hmm. Like a limited lifetime. I mean, we used to have back in the day, it was 25 year shingles, mm -hmm. well, even 20 year shingles, 25 year shingles, 30 year shingles, 40 year shingles. And then they had 50-year shingles. And then everything kind of got wrapped into a limited lifetime warranty. 
and everyone's definition, I guess, is a little bit, you know, different. Yeah. Every manufacturer. So I always, you know, when I'm talking to folks, homeowners, I'm always like, hey, you know, think of a limited lifetime warranty as like a 50 year warranty because mm-hmm. they try to compare it with other warranties they've received from other contractors, other manufacturers. So for all intents and purposes, I just, you know, and, and maybe I'm doing this wrong, but mm-hmm. I kind of have the homeowner view it as a 50 year warranty, limited though. Yeah. Meaning you're on you know, the right track just because, um, even though you are getting that priority coverage through 50 years, you're not getting that 100% value that a lot of homeowners are expecting. And what's the limited part of the lifetime mean? Is that just because of insurance events? And you know, there's obviously some limitations to the warranty. Yeah, Is acts that- of God, limitations to the warranty, the proration period. Um, it, it covers defective material only. So one issue that we come across is that nine out of 10 problems with your roof comes from improper installation. You know, mm-hmm. there's, I think in Maryland, there's around 11,000 contractors with a license and a hammer. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's why picking the right contractor is important. Um, understanding the warranty is important. Understanding the system that you're getting is important. If it's not in writing, you know, is it re- does it really exist is, is, is part of the question I always ask. Because um, that's where we, we kind of get into these higher level enhanced warranties, where if you're working with a certified contractor, you know, you get 50 years of non-prorated material defect coverage. So if I make the shingles wrong at the plant and you have the system plus warranty, I'm paying the contractor to tear off the bad roof, put the new roof on, including the labor. It's valuable to the homeowner who's moving because it's transferable, right? So it shows the uh, the investment that they put back on their property because it's a legally bound document from GIF. And it includes for inflation. So building products have never been more expensive in the history of the United States. Mm. So- you know, it's extra coverage and peace of mind for the homeowner. So um, a certified contractor through GAF, mm-hmm. they're able to offer the out-of-the-wrapper limited lifetime warranty on the products. Yep, that comes with the purchase of the shingles. Okay. Right? So, and who's able to offer the system plus warranty, which extends the proration period on the materials up to 50 years? Yeah, so so a certified contractor, that's the enhanced warranty that that they can provide. Covers 50 years of, of non-prorating material defect coverage. So if you make it wrong at the plant, it's included where where GAF will pick up the tab to pay you to, to tear off the problematic roof. Okay. Uh, we'll pay for the labor to reinstall it, and we'll pay for the, the shingles and the GAF accessories involved. Wow. Okay. That's um, good. And then we get into the higher level where the master elite contractor, only 2%. Of contractors in the in the country qualify to to earn this status with us, where the the main value of it comes from the silver and the golden pledge, where nine out of ten issues that come from your roof is due to improper insulation. So, part of the peace of mind that GIF is trying to offer through contractors who have earned this status with us is we're going to pick up your misapplication, and the reason why is because you have to meet all these rigorous criteria with us. We do training every year um, in order for you to renew this status with us. And because we know your training, you know, and, and, and you have the most up-to-date installation practices, masterly contractors are qualified to offer that level of protection. So the average contractor goes out of business within three years, right? So the peace of mind to the homeowner is that should anything ever happen to the to the contractor, if the masterly wins the lottery and never gets on a roof a day in his life ever again, the largest, oldest manufacturer is going to pick up the tab. And that's for the silver pledge and the golden pledge. Correct. Silver pledge is for 10 years. Golden pledges for 25 with the HDZ. And then for the new UHDZ, that's a little bit thicker. It's a premium upgrade. You get 30 years. 30 years on the workmanship Mm -hmm. from a master lead contractor, which American Home Contractors is a master lead contractor. Correct. So if we sell an ultra high definition shingle product to a homeowner, we could offer the golden pledge and you guys will cover it up to 30 years. God forbid something were to happen to us. Mm -hmm. Right. 100%. And then the materials, of course, are non prorated up to 50 years. Perfect. Right. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty good. Now, is there anything you might be able to share with us um, coming out with warranties for the future, like maybe the President's Club? I can't talk about that. You're going to have to wait until April. And the only reason why is because they're still ironing out all the, the fine print. Um, the President's Club program has been around for a while. And up until recently, it hasn't really... It's been a, a story to sell in the home, which is a good story because you're, you're higher quality than the average master elite, which is already high quality within itself. So they're, they're throwing around some ideas of different things to make it more worthwhile for all the effort and, and, and partnership that you guys put into the program. We want to reciprocate. Excellent. Mm. Okay. Um, what about some other products? Timber steel. Yeah. 
what can you talk about that product with us? Um, timber steel is still in, in early days, so I, I can talk very briefly on it, but it's exciting because uh, metal roofing is, has been a small segment of the market, but it's been a, a very valuable um, segment of the market where a lot of contractors can you know really grow their businesses if they specialize in it. It provides extra protection on your roof. It typically lasts longer than a regular asphalt shingle or a clay tile, even if you're out west. But the problem that contractors and homeowners have experienced with metal in the past standing seam is that you might need to have your own form machines and, and create it yourself, which is time consuming and technical. Um, the install is a lot more tedious than a regular shingle install, which requires a nail gun. Mm -hmm. So the, the cost of labor alone is, is, is much more expensive and that kind of, you know, intimidates homeowners when they're considering it. So what we're trying to do with, with some of these other programs, like you're familiar with the solar program, we're trying to make solar more um, a, attainable for the average homeowner. Same thing with timber steel. So we're trying to make metal roofing more attainable to homeowners, but also um, appealing to someone who specializes in asphalt shingle roofing. Well, that's awesome. Well, you guys figured out how to do a nailable solar shingle, mm -hmm. so now a nailable metal shingle, Yeah, which would be great. Um, what about services? I know you guys are doing something with insurance in 2024, which is exciting. Yeah, yeah. So I like to think that that you know GIF we make great products. That's that's part of the reason why we're able to do what we do. But the other side to it for the contractors that we have great programs in terms of uh, measurement services at at affordable rates to help you you know get the measurements you need in a timely fashion that are accurate. Um, we have a new service called um, QuickSight which will provide legitimate weather data um, for specific addresses. So if you're trying to work with an adjuster um, and you know that there's damage, but they, they might be giving you a hard time, you can you know have legitimate data backed by a PhD of meteorology who signs off on all that. And then hmm. the local codes that that address falls under because they're different in every state, right? So it's important that in the Northeast where we are, drip edges is, is required by code. Ice and water shield two feet past the warm wall down by the gutter line is is required by code. So uh, some adjusters who come from out of state might not know that, right? So we can make it easier for them to understand. And then new within the last month or so is, called, is a program called Scope Connect, where um, insurance companies speak very specific languages, whether it's through Xactimate or Symbility. And, and the idea behind that program is we want to take the headache out of trying to learn how to speak insurance's language, where um, for a really affordable cost in about 24 to 48 hours will give you a complete insurance scope of work for a re-roof and, and gutters as part of that package. Wow. So <clears throat> a storm hits and if we don't have in-house in-house supplement team, people working with Xactimate or Symbility, um, we can just reach out to you through the scope, mm -hmm. right? And then give you the, what do we do? Provide the address? Yep. You put in the address and then It'll ask you, do you want the measurements? Do you want the weather data? Or do you want the insurance scope of work? And then you check all or one of them or two of them. And then you'll get the you'll get the weather data pretty much immediately. You'll get the measurements within 30 minutes. And then you'll get the scope of work within 24 to 48 hours. And now, then, is this pre um, having the adjuster coming out and filing the insurance claim? Or is this, at what point in the process is, is this getting involved? Um. It depends on the way that, that the contractor structures their business, where some of them, you could do it if you want to bundle the, the cost and save money up front because you know you're, you're going to try to run it through insurance. You could do it all at once, right? I think that like, what is it, State Farm, you bundle and save or Progressive or something. But um, <laughs> but you run a risk that it won't get approved through insurance, right? Yeah, that's always a possibility. Or they might not approve a full re-roof and they might you know only pay some money for a repair for a specific plane of the roof that happens sometimes and so maybe best practice is to file the claim mm -hmm. if you think there's damage have the insurance adjuster come out on site determine the scope of work yep and then after that get the uh gif services involved yep. with scope yep then you're speaking their language and you can turn around and give them everything they need yeah in a timely fashion give them the estimate based off of the scope of work that was approved and then they handle the supplement process as well yep so you can follow up with this uh this program scope connect and um, they do typical revisions. I want to say at cost or, or at the cost of the initial report. And then if you have to do significant supplements, you know, you would work with them directly on whatever revisions might be needed. 
Well, that's awesome. Yeah, because we've used some other carriers in the past, and it's been hit or miss. Has it? You know, well, it's been hit or miss based on their availability. Mm-hmm. So if there's not a lot of storm work, then service is great because yeah. there's not a lot of people using and tapping into their services. But once the storm hits, then there's dozens of contractors all signed up with the few supplement companies that are available out there. And then they quickly get bogged down. And then we receive poor customer service. And yeah, that's always my concern in a storm event because it's it's feast or famine. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's hard to scale up enough once a big storm event happens to meet that storm surge. I mean, everyone's trying to hire as many crews as possible, sales reps, get as many claims supplemented. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I guess the true test will be if and when a storm does hit to see how fast that can, you know, scale up and down to accommodate the demand in the marketplace. Yeah. But it's it's good that you guys are offering that service because there's definitely a need in the industry for it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's um, it, it's it's great for the the insurance contractor who might be well-versed in Xactimate, but they might not be familiar with Symbility. Um, which is another new, newer, I should say, language that insurance speaks, right? So if you're not familiar with that, this is a great outlet for you. Or if you're uh, a retail contractor who's not really well versed in, in insurance, and you know it's been intimidating to get into because it's a very specific niche business model, you know it'll help make that transition a lot easier. Relating to the services, you guys have scope. Now you guys have always been good. GAF has always been good with samples. Mm-hmm. You guys provide the best samples and some of the best support we need in the marketplace so that we can demonstrate your products to homeowners. Um, What is new for this lineup of displays and samples that we can look forward to in 2024? Yeah, so right now that's currently available. We're in a good position with samples in terms of the large sample boards because, you know, homeowners want to see what's going to go on their roof and that's the best way you can do it is give them a full-size shingle sample. We also have these really nice trifolds that show all the color chips in one about the size of a, a piece of paper so you can see all the different colors that we have available. In addition to that, now we have a variety of samples and literature where, you know, we'll, we'll compare and contrast the HDZ versus the UHDZ, show you the different color blends. We'll highlight the diff- the warranty differences, so that way it's very easy to understand the benefits to one or the other. Literature, we try to make it as crystal clear as possible where we, you know, number each component within the system where when you're going to start with a clean deck for a re-roof and leak barrier goes down first, so everything leak barrier oriented is marked as number one, right? Um, because homeowners typically are not roofing experts, you know? nor do they really want to be. So that's why they're relying on you, the contractor. And GAF, our goal is to make it as easy as possible for contractors to sell and install jobs. Cool. We you talking about a cool uh, sample board that you guys are coming out with related to, you know, being able to scale up in a storm situation. Mm-hmm. Are you able to share some details about that? What I can say is that that uh, GAF has been aware of, storms have been, storms have increased nationally throughout 2023. They were up eight times compared to what they were in the past. So when storms come, we need to be prepared, like you were saying, right? Contractors are worried about getting the crews in place, opening up the claims. Manufacturers are worried about getting material where it needs to go. We need samples where they need to go. We need our boots on the ground. We need to assist American-owned contractors with getting their job signs available, marketing however best we can to, to do it. So part of the, the, the problem that we've ran into in the past is we haven't been able to have enough samples just because our samples are true shingle samples, right? So, you know, we're looking at ways in in order to make it more available and more cost effective. So that way, if there is a storm market or um, if you want to walk in with all of our colors of a big board, you know, you're not carrying in 16 gigantic heavy shingle samples where the granules get all over the table and, you know, they get beat up in your truck and, they get wet because they're sitting in the bed of your truck and then they get ruined. I got to send you more and um, <laughs> whatever we can do to make these samples as real photo real as possible, but something that we can scale massively in the event that we need to mass distribute them to a specific market. Cool. That's interesting. I want to go back to some of the, some of the other product lines, specifically the underlayments. There's a lot of underlayments, and it can be overwhelming on which underlayment to choose mm-hmm. for the particular project. Can you kind of give us some guidance on you know, the various options of underlayments and maybe where you would see the, the appropriate application for the various underlayments? Yeah, yeah. So the first thing I would kind of start with is that it used to be 
a typical 15 or 30 pound felt paper, right? And that's what was traditionally used up until I don't even know how recently, but that's always been the way that, that it's still sold. It's still sold. Yeah, it is, but it still use it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, and the problem with, with felt paper is that it's, it's an organic felt paper. So when crews are up on the roof, all the busy bees are trying to do what they're going to do. They're on a, on a steep pitch. And sometimes that stuff gets ripped up under their shoes and then it wrinkles and it's telegraphs through the shingle and the homeowner's not happy. Um, you know, if water gets through the shingle for whatever reason, um, it, you know, sometimes it absorbs it and can compromise the deck, which would then in turn compromise the shingle, or it could create, um, some type of organic growth in and around the attic space, which is always a problem. So, um, the other option is, uh, uh, synthetic underlayment, right? And that's becoming more and more popular. And there's a very, like you were saying, there's a, uh, tons of different kinds. Um, we have three that are really popular in the marketplace, um, depending on, whether or not you're looking to be as cost effective as possible, or if you're looking for something that is a more higher end, if you're doing a higher end roof and 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 we're concerned about attic ventilation, or if we're concerned about the steepness of the pitch, some of them are more walkable than others. So the three that we have, our entry level synthetic is called Felt Buster. It's pretty popular in the marketplace. Um, the benefit to uh, felt buster versus a regular felt paper is that it's not going to rip the way that felt paper rips, right? So guys can walk on it pretty easily. The The next step up would be Tiger Paw. Tiger Paw is super walkable. If you know how to do a backflip, you'd be able to to do a backflip on it. The, it's super high traction, which on a steeper pitched roof, um, a lot of installers appreciate because it's easier for them to do what, they're, what they got to do, right? It's a lot safer. And then the benefit to deck armor, which is the step above Tiger Paw, is that it has the same level of traction, super walkable, but it is a breathable underlayment. So any hot, moist air that you as a homeowner produce, whether you're cooking, whether you're showering, if you have um, a humidifier in your house, if you have a fish tank, all this stuff creates moisture and it needs to somewhere to go. And and it's always going to rise up into the attic space. And if that attic space isn't properly ventilated, that's where problems occur. So the benefit to deck armor is that it will allow hot, moist air to escape through the plywood, through the underlayment and wick out the sides, kind of like, like a Under Armour type of material versus a cotton Mm. shirt kind of material. Yeah. The material feels kind of like a diaper, if you will. Right. A comfortable diaper, maybe. Comfortable. Hopefully. Hopefully. Diaper for the roof. No rashes. (laughs) (laughs) So with all the, all three of these synthetic felts, felt buster, tiger paw and deck armor, do you have to use button caps exclusively or can you use staples to fasten this down to the roof deck? We always recommend caps, whether it's cap staples, cap nails. And the reason being, um, if it is exposed, uh, uh, deck armor can be left exposed for up to 90 days. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice. So if you are going to you know, allow this project to prolong or maybe you can't get back around to it because it rains for a couple of days. It could be new construction. New construction. Um, and you have cap nails, it's not going to allow moisture to get through the the underlayment right underlayment in its in itself is not waterproof it's designed to be water shedding just like a roofing system oh really Mm -hmm. the underlayment is not waterproof the only waterproof part of a roofing system is the we call it leak barrier but a lot of uh contractors call it ice and water shield and the reason why that stuff is waterproof is because any nail or staple that goes through it is going to self-seal Okay. Because it's an asphaltic membrane. So if you're doing a sales demo, you know, you could put it in your pocket, let the heat of your thigh rub it up a little bit, and then you poke a, you put it on top of a water bottle, poke a nail through it, and then you can flip it upside down and it's not going to leak. Right. Okay. But over the course of the the lifetime of the roof. mm -hmm. Okay. And then speaking of leak barriers, what kind of leak barriers does GIF manufacture? Um, In this market, we have two. Uh, Weather Watch is our most popular. It's a granulated ice and water shield. So you put it where all the vulnerable areas are on the roof. You put it on the eaves, which is by the gutter. You put it um, in the valleys where water collects. You put it around any pipes or penetrations, five inches up any sidewalls. Because of that asphaltic membrane that self-seals, any of those nails or staples are going to become watertight thereafter. So then when you install the underlayment next, the starter strip, the, the, the shingles themselves, and then the ventilation and the ridge caps, all of those are designed to shed water as quickly and efficiently as possible. But... Where we're most prone to water is where you're going to put ice and water shield or, or leak barrier. 
Okay. So you have the granulated ice mm-hmm. and water shield, weather watch. Yep. Right. And then what about a high temperature ice and water shield? Do you guys manufacture that as well? We do. We do. It's called StormGuard, and it's been growing traction recently because we, I would say that we re designed the product a couple of years ago and it's gained some steam where initially it was designed to be a high temp ice and water shield. So it goes well under standing sea metal. It goes well under any metal accents, maybe over your, your porch or, or something like that. But with the new product, it has a similar texture as deck armor. So the way that deck armor is super walkable, a lot of guys who complain about these granulated ice and water shields, uh, they find them slippery. Right, the the granules are going to slip out from underneath them. Oh, they stick to the underside of your shoe mm-hmm. when it's hot out too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, when it's a hundred degrees up there. I fell off a roof with that. That was the only did you? knock on wood. That was the only roof I've ever fallen off. Yep. When was, did you fall off a roof? Uh, it was years ago, over ten years. It was a very hot day. The sun was shining on it, and I had on cougar paws, the mm-hmm. safety boots. Had my rope and harness, but I. Took the rope off of my harness as I was grabbing a hold of the, the ladder. And unfortunately, my foot just slipped out on top of the ice and water shield. I fell onto the roof. Whoa. Hit my butt. And then I fell down. And luckily, it was only a nine foot drop. And I landed in the mulch like yeah. a cat on my feet. So I was fine, like no issues, got right back up. But it was a little, yeah, it was a little eye opening. Like, That's hey, scary. man, that weather watch, you better be careful walking around on it. Yeah. Um, Because it can get very slippery. And again, it was stuck to the underside of my cougar paw boot. Yeah. There was nothing that could happen. Yeah. So, I mean, StormGuard would be great, you know, in that instance. And hopefully we never have to worry about that ever again. But, you know, that that brings me to, um, that made me think about something else, though. Because luckily, the homeowner went with a licensed and insured contractor. If If the worst possible outcome in that situation happened, you know, the homeowner's in in a vulnerable position. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, right. licensing, insurance, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I do. I do prefer the StormGuard product, the high temperature ice and water shield. It's great. I can vouch for it. Now I do have a question: If we're going to install um, a roof with full ice and water shield, mm-hmm. uh, weather watch or StormGuard, is that something that GAF would recommend? And if so, is it like slope? specific like low slope versus steeper slope so in this market it's definitely um more common for low slopes because of the way that shingles are and how we want it to be water shedding um our minimum requirement in terms of pitch for a regular shingle roof for our normal installation is 412 right um my installations instructions say that you can install shingles between a 212 and a 412 but you have to have um, a special installation of either ice and water shield or a special installation of the underlayment to help prevent against ice damming, which is um, a problem in the Northeast. So it's definitely something that does happen. The downside to a full ice and water shield application is that if you are not calculating ventilation correctly, if you don't have enough intake and exhaust, your roof is not going to breathe. So it will you know, keep any hot, moist air that collects in there. And then, like I said earlier, potentially lead to to more problems than you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the concern with full ice and water shield. But there are homes that are built with closed attics, and they have a 312 pitch roof. And, I mean, the only way to install asphalt on those roofs is full ice and water shield. And, you know, prefer to use StormGuard. Mm -hmm. Um, Is it okay to install your products on a closed attic system, or does it have to be ventilated? So we do have exclusion forms for instances like that because, you know, we we do realize that it's becoming more and more common that these enclosed attic systems are becoming more prevalent. So, you know, most of the manufacturers, even excluding GAF, require proper ventilation in one form or another. If you can't get it for whatever reason, whether it's an enclosed system or, you know, a, um, a cathedral ceiling or any like of these weird designs that an architect came up with because they wanted to be unique. We do have exclusion forms where, you know, a master league can still provide the same levels of coverage across the board. Um, it's just a conversation that we have with the homeowner that, you know, one, one concern that the manufacturer has is that we want proper ventilation. We understand that you might not be able to get it. We're still going to give you the coverage, but if there's a problem with ventilation, you acknowledge the fact that, that we have to work around it. Cool. All right. So last few questions. What is your favorite part of the roofing industry and why did you want to be part of this this journey? My favorite part about the roofing industry is the people. 
And I didn't think that that was what my my career path was going to take me to. When I was in college, I wanted to get into sports. Sports was, I get glamorous, I guess is the right term where there's, you know, you're, you could be, I interned with the 76ers when I was in college. So I was hanging out with all the basketball players and seeing all this cool stuff, but there's no money in sports, right? It's hard to, it's hard to build your career and start a family and do all this stuff that you want to do as a young adult until you really break into the industry and you do it for a long time. So funny enough, I grew up around GAF and the roofing industry. My, my dad has been in the industry for, for over 13 years. He's been with GAF up in uh, New Jersey for the last 13 years. And I grew up around it. I've seen how, you know, his customers have become his friends and they've become almost family at this point. And I've been familiar with GAF for so long that I know that it's a great company. People love working for GAF. It's been a highly coveted job where, you know, my predecessor was here for 23 years. Her predecessor was, was here for 50, you know, people die or retire at this, at this company, which is pretty cool. And it, and they make it easy because we make great products, we provide great services, and we have a really great contractor network to work with. You know, guys like like American Home Contractors are easy to work with. We have a good time together. You know, we we provide solutions to the homeowners that need them, and it's 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 not easy, but you know, it's it's as easy as it can be. You know, mm-hmm. just because of the 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 people that I get to interact with on a daily basis, whether it's my customers or whether it's um my customers who are distributors or who, if it's my, you know, internal corporate people, you know, everyone's great. Cool. So what was your most memorable GAF install out of the two years you've been working with GAF? My most memorable. It can be good or bad. Install. I'll have to invite you out on some of ours. Yeah. Bring me out on some, some good ones this year. (laughs) I would say my most memorable install positive has been, one of the new Timberline stol- solar installs. Maryland has been one of the early pilot markets for the product. It's super entry level about the product. It's a nailable solar shingle. So it blends in seamlessly with the asphalt shingle. American Home Contractors is one of the, the first to get involved with it, which is great. And the benefit to the homeowner is that it's part of the roofing system. So it's all under one manufacturer, one warranty, which is nice because there's no finger pointing if something happens. Um, GAF will guarantee that energy output for a certain number of years. And if we don't do what we say we're going to do, we're right, we'll write the homeowner a check, which mm-hmm. is fantastic peace of mind. Yeah. You guys are great with the homeowners. So I think that, I think that, um, this product being so new and kind of being the realization of solar and roofing actually starting to come together as one cohesive system has been pretty memorable. Um, my least favorite memorable install is any Manser roof. Ooh, any yeah, Manser roof. Me too, me too. <laughs> because they're never done right. <laughs> we do them Unlike, right, but I still don't like them. They're never done right <laughs> if I get a phone call about it. But American Home Contractors doesn't call me about Manser roofs, which means they do them right. Good, yeah. We learned the hard <laughs> way. You know, you got to six nail them. You got to go through the common bonding area. Mm-hmm. And you got to hand seal them as well. Yep. Yep. Which a lot of crews don't want to do that. They don't want to do it. It takes it takes longer. It's harder because it's it's so steep. It's almost a vertical wall. So I get it. You know, it's more time consuming. But the homeowner needs to be aware of it. If they want to do it right, they got to pay for better, more more TLC when it comes to the install. Yeah. You know, or turn that mansard roof into a wall siding. That's right. Yep. <laughs> what is your What is your favorite part about being within the GAF Master Elite program? Uh, well, it's like anything. It's the relationships. We really enjoy working with you, Eric. You've been great. You've been, I don't want to say at our beckoning call, but you know, if our team needs you, you've always been responsive. You've always been available. You come out, you hang out, you have a good time. You know, we catch up on a good cadence, Mm. you know, which I think is important. You know, there's some reps of some other manufacturers that we don't see or hear from all year long. And that's not a good way to keep a good relationship. Yeah. So we appreciate the fact that you come in, you ask good questions, you keep us informed on what's new and exciting with GAF, and you guys are leading the industry. You know, you guys are the most forward thinking with the Timberline solar shingle, the first nailable solar shingle. It's amazing. And the fact that you guys took the leap and did that, you know, a lot of other companies are terrified of doing that. And you know, the other manufacturers are terrified of doing that. Um, But no, I give you guys kudos for, you know, going into the wilderness and creating your own path. And it seems like a lot of the other manufacturers are just following you guys 
down that path that you guys are blazing. So thanks. Kudos. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for being part of the uh, American Home Contractors podcast. It was a pleasure. And uh, we'll have to do this again. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yep. <laughs> Thank you.